schematic diagrams. If you uh, can understand how a schematic diagram depicts what is actually inside and wired inside of a condensing or an air handling unit, uh, there's many times where you can sit down in front of the schematic diagram and know what is wrong with the HVAC unit or at least where you can start. But the one thing you have to understand is how this represents what you're looking at in, in an outdoor unit or an air handling unit. So this is a Nordine schematic diagram or wiring diagram and I use this one because it uh, it has both of the types of wiring diagrams that you're going to see on the outdoor units. Unfortunately this is not standardized from manufacturer to manufacturer uh, but this will give you a pretty good representation. So on this side, uh, this half of the schematic, we have what's called the ladder diagram. It's called that because it looks like a ladder. Now, what you have to understand about a ladder diagram is it doesn't depict the wiring of the the unit. It shows, it simplifies the connections for each one of these components within the um, heat pump. And this one happens to be an outdoor heat pump unit that we're looking at. So this is a ladder diagram. This half of the schematic from here over to the left. A lot of the new manufacturers only include the ladder diagram. But this one we have, we take a look over here at the right. Nordine is nice enough to show, have a wiring diagram. Now this, this depicts the same components. You see we have an outdoor fan motor here and an outdoor fan motor here. The difference being is the wiring diagram shows the physical physical connections of the wiring within the unit. So you can see right here that this line that I'm tracing is a black wire that goes from the DF terminal on the defrost control board up to the C terminal of the outdoor fan motor. This is going to help you if you're following behind another company or another technician who happened to wire something differently uh, or if you remove wires and can't remember where they go back where they're connected back to. This is going to give you a uh, wire by wire, color by color connection and it's the actual physical connections that you'll see inside of the air handling unit or the outdoor condensing unit. Alright, the second part of a wiring diagram or schematic diagram that uh, you need to understand is what's called the legend. And down here this happens to have the wiring legend and the field wiring which is wiring that is done by the electrician or by the installers is depicted by a dotted line. So over here L1, L2 and ground in the dotted lines it, you will not find inside the unit but you will find connected to the unit. So that's the L1, L2 and ground right there. This also depicts the low voltage wiring as a slender line and the high voltage wiring as a thicker line. Now this is the wiring that is going to be inside the unit itself right here. This comes from the factory and that's the factory wiring not the uh, field supplied wiring by the electricians. The other uh, important part of all of the schematic and ladder diagrams is they have a nice little um, decoder down here so that you can s see what e all of the abbreviations stand for up in the ladder diagrams and in the wiring diagrams. For example, we have CCH. If you don't know what that stands for, you can come down here and take a look and see that CCH stands for crankcase heater. And then let's look down here. CC, what is this? Look down here at the bottom and you see that it's, that stands for um, contactor coil. So while all of the manufacturers don't standardize schematics, they will all have legends and they will all have a little decoder down here that shows you uh, what the abbreviations stand for. Okay, before you begin looking at a wiring diagram to do some troubleshooting, there's four components that are included in every uh, schematic and wiring diagram. 
doesn't matter the manufacturer or even what type of equipment that you're looking at. Uh, the first part of this, the four components, would, is the power supply. That's depicted normally by L1 and L2. It's pretty common throughout the industry, no matter the manufacturer. And that's the um, wire that comes in from the disconnect or the circuit breakers. The second component is a line to carry the power. And that's depicted by this thick black line right here and right here and throughout this schematic. So this is what carries the power to all the components. The third component is a load. And normally in our HVAC equipment, that's going to be a compressor, outdoor fan motor, uh, the control boards right here or the indoor fan motor. And the fourth component is a switch and that's what interrupts power to the load and here you can see that there's our switch in this schematic diagram and there's another switch right there. So the four components once again incoming power, power supply coming in, a line to carry the power, a switch to interrupt the power and the load. Four components, that's it. We've been looking at the schematic diagram in its entirety and you're probably thinking, holy smokes, um, how am I going to figure out, and how am I ever going to learn how to use a schematic diagram? Um, well, it's pretty simple once you know how to do it and understand exactly what this depicts. And w if you go up to a uh, a heat pump outdoor unit and you have a compressor that isn't working, what you're going to want to do is ignore the rest of this, this, these diagram, this diagram right here and you're going to only want to focus on the compressor portion of this, of this wiring diagram. So you're just going to take one component and look at it one component at a time. So to make it a little more simple we've cut that out for you. So you're looking at this is how you're going to want to look at your schematic diagram ignoring everything else around it and as you can see here there's only a couple of components you're going to need to check um, the compressor contactor the compressor itself and the um, dual capacitor that's it one two three components that you're going to have to um, check the other things that you're going to keep in mind is for um, a as electrical circuit to work is you need to have a power supply so you're going to want to check the power coming in you're going to need and you need to have a path for that power to f follow which um, what which are the wires so you're going to want to check the wiring make sure nothing is burnt or broken and then basically it's checking the contactor contacts here the compressor or your dual schematic. So as you can see when you look at it individually the schematic diagram that was a little more complex over here becomes a little bit more simple with only a few components to check.